Welcome to another video in mathematics. In this video, we're going to be looking again at uh, dampen, dampening harmonic functions. So here we have a problem that um, I don't believe was in your book. I got it from somewhere else. Uh, but either way, uh, this is a dampening harmonic function problem. And so here it goes. So a mass is supported by a spring so that it rests 50 centimeters above a tabletop. As shown in a diagram, which I'll show in a minute, the mass is pulled down to a height of 20 centimeters above the tabletop and released at time zero. It takes 0.8 seconds for the mass to reach a maximum height of 80 centimeters above the tabletop. As the mass moves up and down, its height, h, in centimeters above the tabletop is approximated by a sinusoidal function of elapsed time t in seconds for a short for a short period of time. Um, sinusoidal, uh, I'm not sure that I've discussed that term before yet, but that term basically means uh, any function that has to do with uh, sine, uh, uh, sine functions, a uh, sine trig, or any form of a sine um, trig function. Keep in mind that uh, cosine, that involves cosine as well, because cosine is, is just a, uh, a shifted sine function. Uh, especially when, when you look at it in a graph. So um, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, there are four questions that this problem asks, and we're going to be dealing with the first two. So graph how the height h of mass varies with respect to the elapsed time. So we want to make a graph that shows uh, this scenario. And then secondly, we want to determine a sinusoidal function that gives the mass height h above the tabletop as a function of time. So a, we're making a graph, and B, we're making a, a trig function. So we want to make a function that will demonstrate this particular problem. So this is what we were looking at. We're looking at a, a mass in the blue box um, attached to a spring, and it is 50 centimeters above the tabletop. And this is the mass at rest. So there's no energy input uh, in this. So it just stays at 50 centimeters. And then somebody pulls it down, so now you're gathering potential energy and pulls it down to 20 centimeters above the tabletop. It is released and it reaches a maximum height of 80 centimeters. So we want to make a graph and we want to make a function that demonstrates um, the distance of the mass from the tabletop. So uh, here I have a, a graph. I have an x-axis and a y-axis. On my x-axis, I use to put time and I have 0 and 0.8 because the problem tells me that at 0.8 it reaches its maximum height. And then I have 0.6. I'll, I'll say why I have 0.6 um, in a second there. Um, and then I have my y, my y um, axis and I have 20 meters which is the lowest that it ever reaches and then I have 80 meters which is the highest. Okay, so which trig function starts from the minimum point? So I've gone from putting my graph up, and I'm, I'm starting to think now also as uh, about how I want to, or which trig function I want to use, which best demonstrates what I'm talking about here. So I, I wrote down here on the left, you see all the different trig functions, and I have y cosine x, and then I have the negative cosine x, and then y sine x, and the negative sine x. So which of those graphs best illustrates what we're talking about? So to pick one, I got to think about my situation. My situation and where it begins, it begins at 20 meters. And then the function goes up to 80 meters. And then if I, continue, if I, think, of it, if I think of it logically, at, after that point, after it reaches its highest point of 80 centimeters, and as you can see here, I have in the background, I have faded the spring so I can kind of get a visual. So once it reaches 80 centimeters, what's going to happen to it? It's going to go back down, right? So my function starts low, it goes up, and then it goes back down, and then eventually it'll spring back up and spring back down. So as I look at my trig functions on the left, I got to think to myself, which function starts low and goes up high? And then low again, and then high again. So it looks like my negative cosine x fits best. That, that, the shape of that function looks like it fits, fits best because when I draw it out, 
it, it looks like a cosine, a negative cosine function. So that's why I'm going to use that in my trig function, and that's h of t. So my, my base function will be h of t, a function of time, equals negative, because remember it's a negative cosine, negative a cosine b x minus c plus d. That's my parent function. Now, of course, I have an a, a b, a c, and a d added onto that, and that's because um, you know I'm going to have a period and frequency and all that to consider. So that's my parent function. Now I want to find out what does that function actually look like. Now, now notice here that I've completed part A already. I've already graphed it. I have a visual of what it looks like, and that's part A. That's all it asked me to do. It asked me to make a graph that um, that demonstrates this scenario. So now I'm working on part B where I'm actually making a, a specific trig function uh, to go with this. So as I look at my different variables that are attached to my cosine x function, and yes, here's, here's, a, here's what these different variables mean. My a is my amplitude, my b is the period, and c is the phase shift. Sorry, let me highlight these. My b is my period, c is the phase shift, and then D is the midline of the graph. So I'm going to be working backwards. Instead of going from A, B, C, D, I will be going from D, C, B, A. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at that D. How do we find D? Again, D is the midline. So there's a couple of ways to, to find the midline. So I can do 80 plus 20 divided by 2, which will give me 100 divided by 2 which is 50. And that's what that midline, that midline would be right there. That midline would be 50 just by doing what I just did. Now, another way that I could do this, okay, uh, is I can do 80 minus 20, and again, I divide it by two. That's going to be 60 divided by two, which is 30. And what this does, this actually gives me the difference between my lowest point and my highest point, 30. So if I do 80 minus 30, that's 50, and then 50 minus 30, that's 20. So that tells me that it, that fits perfectly right there in, in the middle. And um, that actually, that 30 is actually the amplitude of the line, where as opposed to going this route right here, that just gives me the midline uh, uh, straight, straight on. So two ways to figure out the midline, two ways to figure out D. Uh, I can either add them and divide by 2, or I can subtract the difference and divide by 2, and that will give me the amplitude, or I can just get the midline straight up that way. So that's 50. So as you can see, my, my graph or my, I mean my function is beginning to take shape slowly. So the next thing I want to look at now is C. Now C tells me if there's any phase shift. Is it, is it going to shift horizontally? Is it going to go along the x-axis at all? And I can see here, because my starting point is x0, that there is no phase shift. So since there is no phase shift, that means that's 0. And if I clean that up a little bit, then I just, I'm just left with x. So the next thing I want to focus now on is my period, b. So let me go back to writing on the screen for this one. So the, the equation to find period is 2 over b. Okay, And in this case, the the problem if you go back and read the problem it tells you what what the frequency is what what b is and it's 2 pi over 1.6 and that that is my b right there that's it that's my period anyways so that helps me convert that frequency into a uh, into a radian form so that's what i would replace my b with is 2 pi over 6 and again, 0.6 is something, the B, the B is what you get from the problem itself. It's, it's always going to give you what B is. All right. So 2 pi over 6. And now I'm going to put, put my attention to A. And if you recall, recall, A is amplitude. And if you recall earlier, we actually found our amplitude when we were looking for our midline. If our midline is 50, then we look at how, what's the difference What's the, how, how far is my midline from the highest point from the crest of my wave? And that is 30, because 80 minus 50 is 30. And that's it. That's my equation. I've just completed part B. 
My equation is negative 30 cosine 2 pi over 1.6 x plus 50. That's my function. Okay. So uh, if that's my function, then now I can go and focus on part C. What is the height of the mass at 1.4 seconds after being released? So if I look at my graph, remember I have it from 0.8 to 1.6. Uh, and the reason why I put it all the way to 1.6 is because that's, that's a, a complete period. That's a complete cycle that the spring goes through. And so I'm looking for what height is my graph at when I'm at 1.4 seconds. So then I'm looking for the, the y for that. What is my y? So if I replace x on my graph that I have up there on the screen, if I replace x with 1.4, 1.4 seconds, that will give me what h of t is. That'll give me how, how high it is. So I want to take a second right now to show you on a calculator what, what that's going to look like. So I actually already have it on here, if you can see that. So I go to stat plot, and then I plug in my equation, and that's what it should look like. And then once I do that, I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to go to my window, and now pay attention to my window because um, I, have, I have made the window big enough. I, I've essentially made the same thing uh, on my calculator, on my graphing calculator that I have on my graph. I have my x minimum at zero because we start at zero and my x maximum at 1.6 uh, just like I do on my graph here and then my y minimum it's going to be zero or I can make actually I have I think I have it at 20 and then my y maximum is at 80 so when I press graph okay I'm going to press uh, graph you're going to see that it's going to graph it and the window is just so so I can see this exact function that cosine function, right? So the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out what my y is at 1.4 seconds. So what I'm going to uh, press is second trace, okay? And this is the window you're going to get. And you want to scroll, uh, actually it's already starting at one, value. And once you see that it's highlighting number one value, I'm gonna press enter. And it's saying there, x. What, what x do you want to, to input? And you wanna put in 1.4. So 1.4x, just like that, and then press enter. And when I press enter, you're going to see that it's going to give you a y value. And I believe that y value is somewhere around 28, 29. So by, by using my graphing calculator and using the second um, trace and inputting a value, I can find out exactly what the height is at 1.4 seconds, which is 28.78 or 28.8. Uh, centimeters above the ground okay and that gives me part C and now I can focus on part D part D find the time T when the mass is 70 centimeters above the tabletop for the third time so then as we look at our graph again we want to look for um, when when our mass hits 70 centimeters for the third time you know, and it just occurred to me as I'm, as I'm looking at my um, my x, y axis, I have labeled my distance in meters. It's actually in centimeters. So, yeah. <laughs> well, either way, I think uh, our process is still correct. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on. So in any case, um, I want to find out each time that it hits 70 centimeters. So I want y to equal 70 centimeters. And I notice that it hits it at this point that point but the question is asking me for the time that it hits 70 centimeters for the third time so that means I need to extend my cosine graph my negative cosine graph and so I adjust my window so that um, I adjust my window so that I can have two two cycles two periods of the negative cosine function and now I can extend my 70 centimeter line and I can see where it hits the third time. And now that I can see that, I can now, I can now go about looking for how long, um, at what time period um, is it that, that the uh, mass hits 70 centimeters for the third time. So then I'm gonna have my calculator out and I'm going to show you um, how I have that 70 centimeter line. So as you can see in Y sub two, my second function, I have 70 and then 
I will show you the window secondly so you can see how I adjusted the window. If you look at the x maximum, you'll notice that it's 3.2, whereas the previous function it was 1.6 because I only needed one cycle. But in this one, I need two cycles. I actually only really need one and a half cycles, um, but I just went ahead and did two. So now let me graph it so you can see what it looks like. So you're going to notice that in this graph, there are two cycles that are being made, and then there's going to be the 70 centimeter line that's going to cut through both of those graphs. Okay. So then what I'm going to do, because I want to find out exactly where, uh, what my x value is for that third centimeter, that third 70 centimeter intersection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, second trace. Remember that, that menu right there that we had before? And I want to go to intersect number five. Okay, so I'm going to go down to five and I'm going to press enter and you'll notice that my cursor is almost at 70. In fact, if I, if I press the, the right, uh, the, this right arrow, it'll just go right over it and it never really actually will touch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter. So I'll press enter three times. And you'll see that it'll, it'll give me an exact value, an exact x value for when y is 70 after the third time. See, and that value is 2.186. And uh, of course, I'm rounding there. Okay, so after pressing enter three times, after second trace intersection, enter three times, and then it will give you that exact value that you're looking for or it'll give you that exact point of intersection for those two functions. So just to kind of um, summarize and put an end to this problem, uh, this was a lengthy video, uh, this was a lengthy problem, so um, just want to show here the, how we have answered all four questions. Uh, the first one was regarding the graph itself, and we have the graph that symbolizes what we have on this, in the experiment this spring, and secondly we have the the sinusoidal uh, function, the negative cosine function that goes with this graph, and then we use that function and put it into our calculator to find the first part of this problem. Actually, let me show this here, which is what I'm highlighting right now, which is what is the distance of the mass at 1.4 seconds, which we found to be 28.78, by finding the value uh, at 1.4, and then we added a second function of 70 centimeters on our graph, and we had to extend our graph to two cycles, our cosine graph, and we found out at what point does the mass hit 70 centimeters a third time, which we found to be 2.186 seconds. So that answers A, B, C, and D, which is all shown here in this screen. So I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck in your study.